Right from the beginning of Blessing, Imtiaz Darka draws you into the scene through her use of onomatopoeia. Look at her use of words like cracks, drip, splash and crashes, for instance. The plosives in the first sentence add to this effect. Plosives are cut, gut, put, but, tut and d sounds. You make them by stopping the sound with your, your lips or your tongue or your throat and then releasing it. Listen to them in the first line. The skin cracks like a pod. You can almost hear the skin cracking open. It's meant to sound harsh and brittle. At the beginning of the second stanza, she uses the imperative imagine. She's determined to transport you to the scene. The poem is all about a moment in time. She's describing a scene, a powerful scene of a water pipe bursting in a poor area of Bombay in India. If you go onto the BBC Bite Size website, you can listen to her talking about it. She says this, the moment the water arrived, everything changed. There was so much excitement. The smell of the earth changes. The children are suddenly out on the streets with their clothes off, dancing in puddles and splashing and jumping in the water and somersaulting. Everything changes. And she says this, it's like, I suppose, the way it is in England when the sun comes out. Everybody suddenly smiles. This is a poem about celebration, the thing they've been waiting for, desperate for, craving and yearning for so long is suddenly, miraculously, wildly there, bursting out in abundance. Look at the positive lexis she uses with connotations of treasure and wealth, words like fortune and the metaphor silver. The roar of tongues adds to the sensory detail of the poem. Now we can hear the screaming, the cries of joy, the calls to their friends and relatives to join the crowd, join the mass of frantic hands as they scramble to collect the precious liquid in whatever containers they can find. The reference to tongues here could be a religious reference to the idea of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a spiritual gift where the Holy Spirit speaks through you and prays through you. The implication could this could be that this is like a, a spiritual outpouring, a bit like the moment in Acts where all the disciples start speaking in different languages. Have a look at, in the Bible at Acts chapter 2 if you don't know the bit I'm talking about. There are certainly lots of other words from the semantic field of religion, the title of the poem for a start, but also the voice of a kindly God and the term congregation. My favourite bit in Blessing is in line 12. Darker writes, from the huts a congregation, every man, woman, child for streets around butts in. Now I know it takes an English teacher to get excited about this, but I love the fact that she hasn't used commas or the conjunction and here. It's just every man, woman, child. There's nothing to separate them. They're like one body, one unit, completely united in their single goal to get the water. The passion and the joy and the intensity of the experience breaks down any divisions of gender or age or identity. They become one. The commas later in this list, when she goes on to write about the pots, brass, copper, aluminium, plastic buckets, frantic hands, they add to the sense of pace and urgency. They don't want any of this precious stuff to go to waste. The range of items in the list here from expensive containers to frantic hands could also suggest that regardless of class or status or wealth these people find themselves united in their relief and excitement maybe that's one of the things the whole poem is about the idea that ultimately as human beings we all have the same needs and desires and dreams or perhaps it's not about unity at all but about division Notice that it's the municipal pipe that bursts in a place where there never is enough water. The municipal pipe that belonging to the government or the state. I've often read this poem and thought about what might have been happening before this incident that's described and then what might happen afterwards. That pipe has probably been there for a while and it'll probably be there for a long time to come. The water is there too, all the time. It's just that normally the people in the street don't have access to it. The state, the government does. Those with the power and the money, they control where the water goes and who receives it. 
Normally it passes by right underneath those whose skin is cracking. The people who sit there imagining a single drip in a cup, praying to God to relieve their thirst. The pipe bursting doesn't even seem to be a planned decision to relieve the suffering of millions. It's a mistake. So rather than this poem being about unity and universal human experience, maybe it's about oppression and the causes of poverty. If you found that useful, then please like it and share it and subscribe to English Gorillas.